Hi, welcome again. In this video, you're going to be applying all of the skills you learned in the last video on code.org. So it's going to be based around coding. The coding skills you're going to be using are sequencing, building blocks that have movement attached to them, and also blocks that have variables or conditionals. And also, we're going to be adding some of our own variables to these blocks, things that we can put into a sequence into an algorithm that we've developed ourselves and we want to change. In this case, the example is changing the score. This is a really nice lesson that is going to be done on Scratch and it is a lesson that's been set up by Barefoot, so that's Kaz Barefoot. It's a really great website which I put in the description beneath this video. If you want to check that out, I'd really recommend doing it. They've got loads and loads of coding activities and what's lovely about these activities is some of them are plugged, so using technology, and some of them are unplugged, which is really necessary at a time like this. I put together a step-by-step -step tutorial on Scratch, talking you through how to use the correct blocks and develop this sequence in order to make your own quiz. I've actually left a template for you, which is in the link beneath. You'll notice it loads you up a screen on Scratch. You might have to make your own account and then you'll have some of the blocks laid out for you already. Hope you enjoy it. This is the basic instructions for how to make a quiz. If you want to change it a little bit, develop it so it's a quiz on the moon or it's part of an embedded story, then by all means, please do. It's a great opportunity for you to get your creativity skills out, combine your maths and combine your coding skills. Crack on. I'm working on the online version of Scratch, however you could be working on the downloaded version or you could be working on an app on an iPad or your tablet. As I mentioned before, you've got four blocks that are already put in for you. When the flag clicks, so when the run button's pressed, you've got the say hello string, the question that goes ask, what's your name? This is a great block because it delivers a text bar for the person who's playing your quiz which they can type in. That's going to be really important today. And then you've got the conditional or the variable block. So if, then, and this one's more advanced, it's if, then, else. This is the core function in a lot of games that you will play. So it's great to learn how to use that right now. First thing I recommend when you're using Scratch is always save your work. So I'm just going to save mine as maths quiz. Again, if you're thinking about using your name why not use a different name, your username that you use online, so it can't be traced back to you in any way. And now I'm going to... So firstly, I've got the save block and I'm going to say, welcome to the quiz. And then I'm going to wait after that. The reason I just wait in between each of these lines of string, each of the code, is just to pause and mean that it won't run really, really quickly. So I'm just waiting for one second. And I'm going to ask, what's your name? If I run this, you'll be able to see what I mean by the speech bar that loads up. As you can see, this is loaded up, giving the person who's controlling your test or having to go space to write down their answer. Now I can put in another speech mark saying something funny, like what a lovely name. And then... You might be thinking I could put a wait block in between there, which I'm going to do. So I've just duplicated a block there instead, which I find a bit easier to do. Now I'm going to put in question one. And I'm going to write down what my first question is, which is what is seven times three. This is going to be a times table quiz, but yours doesn't have to be. It's really helpful to watch it back, so I'd recommend pressing the green flag and just playing your quiz to see how it's working so far. Okay, brilliant, and it's asked me the question. So now I'm going to use my variable block. So we know what the answer to seven times three is. We need to make sure that the person who's answering this quiz will be able to get a score when they get that right. So I need the operators. I want the answer in here to be 
21 and I'm going to need the answer block as well, which is circular. What's nice with the block decoding language is you can see what will fit into certain spaces just by their shape, which makes it really helpful. So if the answer is 21, this first part is going to be, if it's correct, I'm going to say, and then I'm going to use the variables, which we're now creating some of our own blocks to start keeping a score. So I'm going to make a variable at the top here, and the variable is going to be called the score. And you can see I've got these options now, set my variable, change my variable. So I'm going to drag in, change my variable by one, but I don't want it to be my variable. I'm going to press the drop down bar and I'm going to choose score instead. So now I'm scoring every single time I get the answer correct. However, we might not get every question correct. So we're going to drag this in and say, if the question is incorrect, we're going to say, try again next time. And then the answer is 21. Let's run it and have a look to see what happens. This time, I'm going to see what happens if I get the question incorrect. It's really good just to see and practice both lines of thread. So if you get the question correct, will I get a score? If I get it wrong, will I not get a score? So what happens if I get it wrong? Try again next time, brilliant. And it tells me the answer. Let's see what it looks like if I get it correct. I'm looking to see if the score in the top left is going to increase by one, because that will show me that the variable I've put in is working correctly. And you can see the scores changed at the top, which is brilliant. Now the fundamentals of my quiz are there. I can just copy the last piece that I made and duplicate that over. So in this case, I might do it. So my quiz has five questions altogether. So this part here, I'm just going to drag away, duplicate. And when I rejoin it, I'll just change the questions, change it to question two and put in whatever you want. You can see one last step that up here at the beginning of the thread, the score is on one, which shows that I need to reset the score every single time. So right at the beginning, I'm just going to put set the score to one. And this will ensure that if you play the game back to back, your score won't keep increasing and it will track everyone's score. Now, I could stretch myself even further. I could challenge this and make this a little bit more complex by getting the sprite to jump up and down. Or if I clicked into costumes, I could get the sprite to swap costumes in between. Or I could even look into playing some sounds if I wanted to. So there are all of the things that I'd like you to have a go at and see if you can make your quiz even more advanced and even more exciting.